So one of the biggest things I think that deter for people from drawing boundaries is that you have this fear of retaliation. There's energetic warfare happening and people that don't understand what they can't see. It's, I mean, yeah, it's going to be really difficult because you wonder why this person's like snapping back at you. Like, I remember in the past, I would be like with a really, like very spiritual people very spiritual people but I started to get like really bad vibes because like say for instance uh, I started noticing that they were talking about things that like they were cool with that I wasn't cool with like some entities that they play around with and and I just uh, I'm I love Ouija boards I do I don't think everybody should use them but I'm into divination. I love Ouija boards. But when people would tell me like they're dabbling in things and they're like they're cool with whatever comes through and stuff, I'm like, okay, so so you don't really care about your psychic health that much though. Like you're cool with the attachments that come through. Okay. I'm glad I'm noticing this. And I would start recognizing the red flags of these spiritual people. And I'm like, but you're saying things like, no, it's cool. Um, I'm pretty sure you'd understand, Jenna. Like, you, you seem pretty cool with, like, a whole bunch. You're pretty open-minded. Like, I feel like you'd be all right with it, right? No. No, not really. <laughs> no, not really. Um, I'm cool with you doing whatever the fuck you want to do. But, like, stay out of my energy. Stay out of my energy. Stay out of my home. Stay out of my bed. Stay out of my dreams. Stay out of my cell phone. Stay out of my contact list. Like, stay out of my life. You can do what you want to do, but, like, don't do it around me. Because I give a shit about my psychic health. I buy salt in bulk, okay? I do salt cleanses. I do egg cleanses. I, I, I do return to sender cells. I do, I do, I just do, I do a lot. All right, I do a lot to take care of my psychic well-being. So when I have these friends that that would say things like yeah but like I want to explore and I want to just know you know I want to know the darker things okay that's perfect um I suppose we all go through that phase that's cool but that's like a phase that's where you're at I guess I kind of already went through that phase so I'm starting to notice that especially in the spiritual community where people lose friends like underwear I mean it, it, you go through friends in the spiritual community like celebrities go through marriages Let's be real. On the ascension path, you can ascend so quickly, like in a matter of days and, and lose contact with like half of the people around you because you just don't resonate at that level with them anymore. And you'll start to hear things when you become more and more enlightened, when you become more and more awake, you start to awaken to the truth that they're okay with some of the things that they're doing that are keeping them in a low vibration. But you weren't though. You made the sacrifice to stop whatever it was, right? You would have loved to have had fun too, sure, yeah. But you don't. You take care of your psychic well-being, you take care of your psychic health. And here's where the, the kicker is. A lot of you are so ready to let go because you're spotting these red flags, but the problem is you're afraid of the retaliation that's gonna come to you from these people when they realize that you no longer are um, going to be energetically giving to them. The, the, the biggest thing is they feel judged. Like, wow, you're just, wow, so much better than, huh? Better than, better than. This is a common projection sent your way for ascending. Wow, you're just so much better than, huh? Wow, just like, righteous and pompous and it, 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 th th this is a projection that is easily made when you start to dis distance yourself between people who are okay with just letting anything into their energetic field and you who are not one of the biggest things evil eye that shit is real and it comes at you like a fucking freight train and for for those of us who are waking up to it psychically using your third eye using your psychic gifts you can see that shit from a mile away you understand what evil eye looks like i remember I remember one of these friends that I was telling you about, the, the, mentioning this, they would, they, they reached out to me after, I don't know, like a year and a half of not speaking. The second they did, the second, I, I, I mean, maybe within like an hour, but 
you know what I mean. Within an hour of receiving word from this person, for a whole hour, I was like, I was scared. I was in fear. I was like, wait, wait, what's going on? What's going on? Why do I feel this way? A thunderstorm came in and my apartment is really, really old. This is like a really old place. And they actually have a crack in the wall where water was gushing in from the storm. It was the worst rainstorm I'd ever had in two years in this apartment. Water was flooding in, literally flooding in through a fucking wall. I, I was just like, okay, all right, all right. Not to mention the windows that are shit and there was water coming through also through a thunderstorm from hell. But it was, the, it was the crack in the wall. This water was gushing out. I mean, maybe like a gallon, a gallon every couple minutes. It was that, it was that profound. And I was like, okay, that is fucking black magic. It, that is literally the universe saying, if you invest in this person again, you get involved in this, you're done for you're done. So I can't remember what I did. I definitely did not talk to that person more than one response. I don't even know if I responded at all. Actually, I don't think I did. But I'm telling you that, that that's one thing that I think a lot of us are afraid to really draw boundaries because you, you're, you're scared of the retaliation that might come at you energetically. But the higher vibrationally you get by removing people, places, and things that aren't serving you anymore the more clearly you're able to see when black magic is being sent your way. And it's not people doing it intentionally. It's just that they've dabbled in things. They've been dealing with things and they didn't clear the energy. So they're trying and hoping and praying to God that you can take it from them. Oh, hey, I, I've missed you. And like, it's, it's really great to talk to you again. Like, like um, do you wanna go for tea? Like, it'd be really great. Mm, nah, not when your fucking apartment is flooding. Don't trust it, okay? So that's one thing that I think is really hard for empaths is you, especially in the spiritual community, you're gonna leave people who are very spiritual. One of the biggest fears you have is like they'll put a hex on you or a curse on you or they'll send evil eye. Honey, some of the most powerful witches I've ever met in my life are former friends that I ended up having to walk away from. And I'm telling you right now, it scared me too, but I still did it. And I'm still here to talk about it. I'm still kicking. Any evil eye they send me, I just send that shit right back. I'm just as powerful as they are, right? I, I'm allowed to say yay or nay to anybody in my life. I don't give a shit how, much, how spiritual you are. I don't care how many voodoo dolls you own. I don't give a shit how your ancestors think they can come at me. I am, I am innocent in this way and so are you. I'm talking to very high vibrational empaths who are extremely psychic, extremely gifted, and you know that you're innocent. At the end of it, you are innocent. That is why you're walking away because your high vibrations are, well, you're godly. You are divine. You have nothing to be ashamed of and walking away, you have nothing to be angry about. You have, they have nothing to be angry about you're allowed to do what you need to do to get out of a really, really bad situation. I don't care how many people around you are spiritual. They can't do anything to you unless you allow it. Unless you make a contract with that person. Like if I would have, for instance, brought that friend back, you know, and we started talking again, I would have been telling the universe that I believed, even though I was seeing signs from my the, the, the universe itself saying, don't fuck around with this person. If I would have taken that friend back and been like, oh yeah, you know, let's go for tea. Like no problem. Mm -hmm. Yes. I would have been signing a contract, a karmic contract because I karma, a karmic contract is signed because you still have something to learn. You're not embodying true unconditional love 24 seven. That's why you need karma. That's why you need a karmic when you are fully in a, an alignment with your soul, with true unconditional love, you realize your higher self doesn't deserve karma. You don't need karma. Why would you sign a karmic contract with a karmic? You don't need that. It's not what you're worthy of. So that was a test from the universe. Like, hello, this is your sign. Now you decide, Jenna. If I would have agreed and gone to tea, I would have been signing a new karmic contract with said person. I didn't think that I deserved a flood in the in, in my apartment. I didn't deserve that. 
I don't deserve anything bad happening to me anymore. I just want a fucking easy life. I just want a great life. I don't deserve anything bad. So I have to prove it by walking away from things that I know would cause me bad karma. That's not my karma to pay off. That was hers. She was the one that dabbled in shit. I didn't. I walked away from it. So if you are fearing retaliation right now by the people that are coming at you because you are now the queen of swords and you're cutting people out of your life left and right, if they're coming at you and you're afraid of energetic warfare, you, I'm really here to tell you that there's good news. When you ascend higher and higher, your vibration is as light as a feather. Honey, you start having dreams. You start getting your spirit guides sending you messages. You start seeing clearly with eyes to see and ears to hear. You start seeing clearly that people are coming at you psychically, spiritually. You start seeing shit like flies, the Lord of the flies. That is a fucking real thing. You start seeing your apartment flood. You start seeing shit like your, your money dry up. You start seeing a zit on your face. You start seeing evil eye. You will start seeing it. That's when you know that you can just say, uh, I return to center. That's not mine. That's yours. That's yours. You don't even have to say it to this person physically. Like for instance, when this person came back to my life, I didn't say that shit out loud. I didn't tell them that. I told their higher self that. I said, uh, no, this just happened. That's on you. You've been dabbling in some things. Thank you for proving that I made the right decision and walking away. Um, not my problem. These all like evil little minion things, like these little demonic, no. Nah. I don't know. I don't know what you've been dealing with, but you haven't been dabbling in the right things. So I am not about it. Um, and I'm not holier than thou. I'm just holy. Not holier than you. I'm just holy. Right? And I try to help other empaths and high priestesses realize they are holy and divine. And you should be choosing what makes you feel good. Right? Um, so... I think one of the biggest things in drawing boundaries is that you're afraid of projections. You're, you're afraid of yourself internalizing said projection. If somebody were to call me holier than thou, wow, so you're just like walking away from people because you think you're, so, you're, you're something fierce, huh? That's their projection. I know I'm something fierce. I know I'm holy. I know I have every right to walk away from anybody that's toxic. And I'm going to continue to do so. Their projections do not in influence my decision making anymore. It used to because I was afraid of retaliation. I was afraid of evil eye every time it would walk away from somebody in the past, especially spiritual people who fucking knew a thing or two about a thing or two. I was deathly afraid of making more spiritual friends because I knew that they fucking knew the laws of the universe and they could really have my ass on a platter using voodoo if they wanted to. However, now I choose high vibrational spiritual people who would never do that because they understand the law of karma and they understand equal energy exchange. They, they literally yesterday, I had to part ways with somebody who's so beautiful and they've been in my life for a very long time, like maybe six months or so, maybe even over that. And I had to part ways with this person. And when I said, I, I hope you can understand why this is happening. I just feel vibrationally. We are, we are different now and I'm, I'm ascending and I, I think we're going our, our separate ways. I was so surprised to hear her say, I completely understand. I meditated on it and I got this exact message from Spirit a couple days ago as well. I am sending you nothing but blessings and high vibes. And she, she literally wrote a prayer to me. She sent me all this good, like blessings. Uh, she sent me a farewell and it was like, she just wrote nothing but kindness about me. Um, and, and then even told me a premonition that she had about my future and I was really grateful for. But the point is like, you now see that you are love. Therefore, you are only bringing in people who are vibrationally aligned with love. Even if you ascend past the level that they're at, they are still love. You're still, you need to trust that you're bringing in people who would not betray you and send you evil eye and shit because they understand love. They don't want to be that, right? You get to a point where even when you have to leave people behind, they're still good people. They're, they're good people. They're not going to send you hate and bad juju. I mean, I do know, though, in the past, I, I, I had a lot of people send me bad juju. But that was technically because I believed I deserved it back then. So when they would send their projections my way, um, I internalized it. If I were ever, and I would hear a lot of it telepathically. A lot of it was not verbal. It's not like they verbalized this to me, but some did. Some did. 
mostly it was it was internal and it was something like wow you're just so you think you're just so special like you just think you're such a mm, holier than thou <laughs> you know and so I would internalize it and I'd be like wow yeah no they're right they're right I'm so judgmental I think I'm I'm so good and goody two shoes and I would internalize it but now I realize like if I'm goody two shoes so are you we're all goody two shoes if you want to be I'm holy I'm a holy woman I channel the, the, the Holy Spirit all the time. I love God. I know what I'm deserving of. I know what I'm worthy of. I'm not worthy of friends that dabble in the darkness and then try to convince me that it's a light. Like, you're not living in the light, though. You're purposely wanting to live in the dark. Go live there. Fine. But don't be my friend. However, what's beautiful is, like, for instance, yesterday when I had to part ways with this friend, this was not because we got in an argument or anything like that or because she's dabbling in dark things no this was simply just our frequency shifted and we're both being called by spirit into a different timeline both of us she's got her own timeline she built i built my own timeline we're just parting ways it's it's healthy and it's it's good we both send each other blessings it was beautiful um we'll probably never speak again and that's okay um we both have a mutual understanding and a mutual respect and she's a very spiritual person so you get to a point where you ascend so much that you have brought in a new collective of people, which means a new collective of friends, that even when you move on from that group of friends, you are still not going to be cursed. <laughs> They're not going to curse you, especially when you stop believing that you deserve to be cursed, which means you stop accepting evil eye, you stop accepting people's projections, you stop... When, when you hear yourself say, wow, you're just, you, you're just such a goody two-shoes, you call yourself out. You call your own fucking ego out. And you say, that's horseshit. I don't think I'm better than anybody. I just think I deserve the world. That's it. I'm not leaving toxic people to hurt them. I just want to love me. You see? You start thinking through the eyes of love. And, and when you love yourself enough, you start seeing that their evil eye is not going to stick on you. Because you don't deserve it. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.